Well, good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. It's good to see you all. If you don't know me, my name is Pastor Ray, and I am so glad and honored that you are here uh, this morning. I want to especially welcome you if you are visiting with us. If you are visiting with us, there should be a card in the pew rack in front of you that says, we're glad you're here, and we are. We are so glad that you are here. We would uh, love to have you fill that out and have a regular view attendance. I'll be at the back left as you exit the sanctuary in what we call the pastor's corner, and I would love a chance to get to know you and give you a gift on behalf of our church Two Sundays from today, September the 29th, we are having a special called business meeting right here uh, in the worship service. Uh, this is to discuss and to vote uh, the strategic plan coming out of the 70 days of discerning God's will. Uh, we have a strategic plan, and uh, I love this. We're adding a little bit to our vision statement. Our vision statement for years and years has been every life changed by Christ. But we want to add to that. Every life changed by Christ. Every person known. Anybody who walks in here is a part of this group. We want them to know that they're known by God, that they're loved by God, and that they're known by us and loved by us. I think it's powerful, and we're going to talk about some ways um, and you should have received via email the complete, well, the, we call it a packet. It's like two pages of, of material. Uh, and so you should have received that via email this week. If you did not get a copy, let us know in the church office, and we'll get you uh, a copy as soon as you can. Uh, this month is the Golden Offering for Tennessee State Missions. It's being collected throughout September. Uh, if you missed out on the prayer guide, there's something that looks like this. And there should be an envelope, pink envelopes around here that look like this if you'd like to give. You can also give to that online as well as your tithes. Uh, if you want to give to it in an envelope, there are tithe boxes in the back. If you want to give your tithe today, uh, there are tithe boxes in the back. And we hope that you give and give joyfully to the Lord and to the Lord's work uh, that's going on here. Uh, the Women on Missions monthly Bible study resumes this week. This is Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. If you want some more information, there's a half sh a sheet of green paper in the Welcome Center uh, that has all the information for the uh, Women on Missions Bible study for this semester. Uh, we've been in a series together called The Fruit of the Spirit, uh, and we're having a special prayer that goes along with the Fruit of the Spirit, a prayer by John Stott, uh, who was a pastor in the 20th century uh, in England. Uh, it, it's a prayer that he prayed every day, but we have it written down on cards that look like this. It's on the back. If you would like to take a copy of that and put it in your Bible or put it on your dashboard where you can pray it, I highly encourage you to do it. I've been praying this prayer for a while in my morning time of prayer. It's really, really been encouraging me in my life. Uh, and we're going to pray it together now. The words will be on the screen. If you'll pray with me. Heavenly Father, I pray that this day I may live in your presence and please you more and more. Lord Jesus, I pray that this day I may take up my cross and follow you. Holy Spirit, I pray that this day you will fill me with yourself and cause your fruit to ripen in my life. Love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen. Let's continue in that spirit of prayer together. We'll take a couple of minute, a minute of silence. If you need to confess, confess. If you need to spend some time in gratitude, spend some time in gratitude. If you just need to listen to God in this moment, do that. There's somebody that you need to pray for that God's put on your heart. Pray for them now.
And now let us pray as our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you please stand in honor of God's word? Be reading from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. We're glad you're here. Turn to somebody next to you and say good morning, and we're going to sing some songs together.
because they can't stay long when I'm here with you it's a new horizon and I'm set on you and you meet me here today with mercies that are new all my fears and doubts yeah, they can all come to because they can't stay long and I believe you are the truth the light come on let me hear you sing the way the truth Thank you for your love, thank you for your grace, and thank you for your peace it's in our lives. Amen. Daily I am constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to my 
adults, you can have a seat. Kids, you can come down front for the children's sermon. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I've, good morning. I've already seen you this morning. As I have, oh, thank you. I have even ridden the elevator upstairs with y'all, so, yeah. Okay, so who can tell me the title of the new song that we're learning to sing? Yes, ma'am. It's Harvest Time. Yes. So where do you think the idea of that song comes from? A movie? Television show? Magazine? Where? It's real life, okay. But where where might we have found that song? Mook. In the Bible. Yeah. It comes from the Bible. In fact, in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus says to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Well, we're having a missions emphasis uh, over many weeks, and so I think we're going to sing this song in a few weeks, and I know that uh, everyone will love that. So when Jesus was talking about uh, asking the disciples about the harvest, was he asking to pray that people would go into the wheat fields and pick all the wheat? No, that wasn't what he was asking. What was he asking about? The The harvest of what? To tell people about Jesus. That's it, right? Boy, Niang, you've got all the answers this morning. Yeah, he was saying that there are so many people who need to know about Jesus. And people need to go out and tell the people about Jesus. And so we're to pray to God, asking him to send people to tell others about Jesus. And that means we need to tell others about Jesus as well. So as the song says, the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few, and Lord, there's so many people who need to know you. So here I am, Lord, send me, send me. Yes, here I am, Lord, send me. So we're going to pray, then you are going to walk to the door. Dong is our line leader. Where's Dong? Oh, there he is. Dong, you're our line leader. And so we're going to walk, and then we're going to go downstairs, and we're going to practice our song. Okay. Dear God, we thank you that we can pray to you asking that you will send out people to tell others about Jesus. We know that there are many people who need to know. Help us to be willing to tell others about Jesus, too. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Father, we, we do ask that each day we would live in your presence more and more. You would remind us that you're good. That you would give us a peace that's so good, it's unexplainable. God, thank you for this time and this space to be together, to worship you, and now to hear from you through our pastor. God, would you speak through him? This morning to us. Amen. Amen. If you have a Bible, I invite you to turn to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. We'll start reading in verse 22. Start reading in verse 22. We'll be in a couple other places in Paul's letters as well today. Galatians chapter 5, we'll start reading verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. For those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified The sinful nature, some of the Bibles might say flesh, with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Would you join me in prayer? Our God, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to receive a word from you. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and redeemer. It's in Christ's name that we pray, amen. The past six years now, I've I've had the privilege of teaching a class at Belmont University. Uh, It's something that I enjoy a whole lot. I I didn't think I was going to get to this year. Then a week before school started, they emailed me in a panic. Yes, okay, I could do that. I, I, I've got to meet some incredible students there. And there's one, five years ago, this is pre-pandemic uh, in particular. I remember this one class, and they were just, they were just an amazing class. I loved them, uh, energetic, full of life, really engaged with the course. There was a couple students that kind of stood out with that. Uh, and, and one of them... Uh, one of them uh, was was a male student in there, and he was just like if you would call somebody like the mayor of Belmont, it'd been this guy. All right, so he's he's gregarious, he's 
He's joyful. Uh, he is involved in everything that you can get involved in as a freshman. Uh, but as the semester wore on, I saw him begin to kind of wear. And then one day before class started, uh, he emailed me and said that he had checked himself in to a psychiatric hospital. And this is not the first time that it's happened, nor was it the last time that's happened with, with up there. Uh, but I was surprised at this one. Because you would look at him and say, man, this kid's got, whatever it is he has, and I, I'm sure he still has it. We, after A few weeks later, afterwards, we had coffee, and he was telling me about his plans and he was telling me about his, what had happened with him over the last few weeks. He said something really interesting and insightful that I thought for a 19-year-old. He said, my outer world was far outpacing my inner world, and I could not keep up. I have a friend, a mentor named Alan Fadling, who lives out in California. He calls this hurry sickness. A friend of mine, th- this, this Belmont student, he had kind of an extreme case to where he just, he just couldn't break. But I, I thought it was just really insightful. My outer world was far outpacing my inner world and just no peace within us. When we were in Africa a few years ago, uh, the Swahili word for white person uh, was mazungu. And uh, I finally I asked, what does this mean? Now, I, I'm not sure if they were telling me the truth or just kidding with me, but they said, one who runs in circles. A pretty accurate description. <laughs> this week, I had a, had a pastor's meeting with a group of us who get together about once a month and pray for each other and talk about things, read books together. And uh, one of the pastors, actually Trey from down the hall, he made a really interesting observation. He said, a lot of the people that he's encountering right now are not liking the person they're becoming. A lot of the people in the world right now are just not liking the type of person that they're becoming. In other words, there's something going on in the formation of what's happening, particularly here in America that's driving us towards hurry, that's driving us towards anxiety, that's driving us towards, uh, towards divisiveness, uh, that's driving us towards, in some cases, violence, uh, whether it's with ourselves or with other people. And there's just something going on. There's just a feeling of lack of peace. Our outer world is far outpacing our inner world. Jesus has a different way of living. Jesus has a different alternative to living. Paul calls it here life in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Life in the Spirit. When you live life in the Spirit, this is what this, uh, this, is what this sermon series is about. When you live life in the Spirit, you produce naturally. The natural result is that you produce the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, we're a third week of this. The first week was love. Uh, last week was joy. And then third up on that list is peace. And when you look at Paul's writings, those three are often in conversation with one another. They're often founder on another. It's almost like Paul was saying that the more that you love God, the more that you love your neighbor, the more that you find ways to will their good, the more joy you're going to have in your life, uh, the more fun you're going to have in your life. And that's honestly going to produce more what? More peace in your life. More peace in your life. Peace, I believe, is one of these great mysteries. Peace is something to be pursued, but it's also a gift that is given. Peace is something that's going to be pursued. It's also a gift that is given. So when you live life in the Spirit, you persistently pursue peace. When you live life in the Spirit, you persistently pursue peace. And the mystery is is that if you pursue peace, God gives it to you. But it's not earned. It's your gift. It's your gift. Now, 
let me, let me to define some terms here. What do we mean? What do we mean uh, when we say peace? Well, a lot of times when we talk about peace in today's world, we're talking about inner tranquility. Like the calmness of mind, calmness of soul, calmness of spirit. That's what a lot of people kind of associate with peace. Uh, and, and so there's, there's that. In Paul's time, Paul is writing during a season and, uh, where the Roman government was the major superpower in the world. And they were writing in what they called the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome. And what this meant was wherever Rome went, there was peace and also the Roman army behind it. To ensure that peace was happening. But I believe when Paul writes about peace. He's drawing from the ancient Hebrew idea of peace. Y'all probably know this word shalom. Shalom involves internal peace. Internal tranquility. But it's more than that. That's peace in all spheres of life. It is wholeness of life, well-being. And so when Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit as peace, he's not talking about nearly um, internal peace, inner tranquility. Nor is he only talking about outward peace like the robots. But there's a sense of bothness here. Peace is personal, but it's not just personal. Peace involves all spheres of life. Peace involves all spheres of life. And when you're living life with God, you are intentionally choosing to pursue peace. And here's why. Because God intentionally chose to pursue peace with you. He pursued peace with you. Through Jesus Christ, the giving of his son, Jesus. And on the cross, God took away our sin. God took away the things that keep us from him in order that we may have peace with God. So when we're pursuing peace, what are we pursuing? Well, one is we pursue peace with God. Here's the good news. That's been done for you. Look at this. This is Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have, this is a great word, peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. In other words, when we're pursuing peace with God, it's given to us because of what God has already done in Jesus Christ. Because of what God has already done in Jesus Christ in his life, in his death, in his resurrection. And what we do is that we receive it open-handedly through what? By faith. Through faith. God has said yes to us. And he requires us saying yes back to him. Yes, I believe in Jesus. Yes, I can rest assured That my eternity is secured because Jesus lives. We pursue peace with God. But not only do we pursue peace with God, we pursue the peace of God. Peace with God, but also pursue peace of God. This is Paul again. He's writing to a different church. This is Philippians chapter 4. He writes this, starting verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it to practice. And the God of peace will be with you. I love that little inclusio that Paul does here. There's the peace of God that transcends all understanding that will guard our hearts uh, and our minds in Christ Jesus. And then at the end of this, after we think about what is good, what is true, what is beautiful, what happens? The peace of God will be what? 
with you. He said, God will be with you. It's interesting, Philippi, where Paul is writing this particular letter, was a military town. It was actually known as Little Rome. A lot of soldiers actually retired to Philippi there. Uh, and, and the word that he uses to guard their hearts, that's a military term. Uh, on the outskirts of the city of Philippi, there would have been guards stationed to, uh, around the walls or, and, and strategic places around the walls in order to guard the city. Paul's using that particular term to say, that's what the peace of God does to your heart. When you pursue the peace of God. When you're trusting with God with all of our, the anxieties that come up in life. You're presenting them. To God. And if those anxieties are still overwhelming you, Paul says this. Think about what is good, what is true, what is noble, what is excellent, what is praiseworthy. When you think about those things, what happens? The peace of God overwhelms your soul. I was reading this week that 30% of U.S. adults struggle with sleeplessness. Now, some of that is physical, physiological, sleep apnea, et cetera, things like that. But for a lot of us, we can't turn our minds off, can we? We can't turn our minds off. Why? We want peace. What's Paul's kind of solution to that? Paul's solution to it is to, is to, is to sit down. And think about the blessings of God. There used to be a song that we used to sing called Count Your Blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. There's some truth to that. What do you do? So you sit down and you write down, man, God, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. And all of a sudden, your soul is overwhelmed with gratitude and peace. Because you sense that God has drawn near. That's when that peace of God, which transcends all understanding, that's when it begins to guard your heart. So we pursue peace with God that's been given to us through Jesus Christ. We pursue the peace of God, uh, the availability of God's presence right here in the here and now, uh, dealing with life's anxieties, dealing with life's struggles, whatever it is that was coming our way. But there's also, there's also another type of peace that, that we pursue, and that's the peace for God's world. Jesus said it like this, blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Uh, Paul says it in another uh, book, to another chapter of Romans, Romans 14, excuse me, uh, Romans 14, uh, verse 19. He says, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual edification. Now what's he talking about there well there were some competing house churches in Rome who had different expressions of the way that faith should be practiced I know that never happens today right had different ways of thinking about things and, and part of it the, the big issue of it was whether or not you can buy meat from the food markets there why? Because that meat could have been sacrificed to idols. Now, what's the thing behind the thing? Well, there probably was some racism there. There was probably some misunderstanding of cultures there. And there was probably some sincere religious devoutness there that you just wanted to make sure that, uh, that we are in right standing with God. What is Paul's solution to that? Make every effort to be at what? Pursue peace. Well, how do you do that? Well, Jesus tells us, also in the Sermon on the Mount, to not only love our neighbors, but to love our who? Our enemies. And to do what? Pray for those who persecute us. So Jesus' strategy for dealing with peace and pursuing peace, uh, for peace for God's world, is to do what? First of all, is to pray for the person, right? 
Pray for the person that, that you don't quite get, that you don't understand, who agitates you a little bit. And here's what I have discovered, is that when I pray for somebody who has, has, has been an agitator in my life, or, or there's something happening there, I don't think of them as an enemy. God usually changes my heart toward them to think of them more as a what? As a child of God. So you're praying for the person. And you're seeking understanding. Where's this person coming from? Is there, is there anything that they're saying that might be right? Is there something that I'm missing? Is there something that I'm doing that's causing some peace in their life that I maybe need to repent from, that I need to get out of my system, that, that I need to ask for forgiveness for? Pursuing peace that way. So you're praying for the person, you're seeking understanding. But what if the person's a different political party than you? I know that's not happening today, right? And that families aren't dividing over political party affiliations. It's close to Thanksgiving, I know. But the same strategy applies. What if, what, what if the person is, is, is just thinks completely different and I just don't quite understand? Are they a child of God? Are they made in the image of God? Did Jesus come to die on the cross for their sins just like they did for you? Now, we may not always get along with everybody. We know that. We're not always going to jive personalities-wise with everybody. We know that. But there is a way that we can live at peace and pursue peace with each other. And our world is in desperate need of people of peace. And our world's in desperate need of churches of peace. Where people can walk in and experience the presence of God. And, and experience the peace of God which transcends all human understanding. You know, when I... When I think of this holistic idea of peace, this idealistic of well-being, think of Horatio Spafford. Some of y'all may know that name. He was a lawyer in Chicago in the late 19th century and, and lost his, a lot of his fortune in the great Chicago fire. And then if as things could get worse, they were they decided him and his fa family would go on vacation together. And he sent his wife and four daughters ahead of him. They were going to go sail across to England when a shipwreck happened. And only his wife remained. He boarded the next ship as soon as he heard. And as they were going over the spot... He wrote these words, when peace like a river attendeth my days, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Y'all probably all know that song. But what you might not know is that after he got to England and his, he and his wife grieved, tried to figure out their next steps in life, that he decided to move to Jerusalem. And he lived there as partially as a missionary, but mostly as a servant of peace, a broker of peace between his Arab neighbors and his Jewish neighbors and his Christian neighbors. And as World War I began to ravage even that area of life, there were a lot of orphans. So they started a children's home that's still in existence today in the east end of Jerusalem, which is the Muslim end. Can you imagine a Christian children's home still operating today in that end? He gave up his life. He gave his life up. For the pursuit of peace. And play, maybe the hardest place to live at peace in the world. The peace of God. 
is available to you. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ is available to you. And God has called you. If maybe you don't like who you're becoming. Maybe God's calling you to become a person of peace in a world of chaos. This week, will you pursue peace? And will you receive it when God gives it to you? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Here in a moment, we're actually going to sing it as well. As our band is getting up here, we're going we're gonna to spend a little bit of time in prayer. Maybe some of you are, are struggling with peace right now. You want to receive the Lord Jesus. This, this is your day to do so. I would love for you to come up here and I'd love to talk with you about it and pray with you. Those of you who are saying, this is, I need to be baptized. You take that first step of obedience. Others of you are saying, this is the church we want to journey with. We want to become people of peace with this church community. Still others, maybe the Lord's working on you right now. Maybe there's a lack of peace in your life. Maybe there's something else going on in your life, and you need somebody to pray for you. If that's you, would you just look at me? I see you. God of peace, guard our hearts, our minds, our souls. With your peace, the peace that only you can give, that transcends all understanding. No matter what it is we're walking through. Help us to become people of peace. Put on those practices of peace. We may be agents of peace in a chaotic world. Jesus, I pray that if anybody here doesn't know peace with you, that today would be the day. I pray that anybody here who is struggling and needs your peace in their life to flood their hearts and their minds and their souls, I pray that would happen. Jesus, I thank you that you hear our prayers. Christ's name we pray. Amen. If anybody needs to respond, I pray that you do so. We stand and sing. It is well.
hope that you have been blessed today. Please allow me to bless you and we'll be dismissed. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.